In this art course, you will learn how to apply the painterly technique of the great Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh into your own art creations. We will use three of his paintings as the references for our exercises. These will be the wheat field with cypresses, the star and I, and the sunflowers. Our objectives will be to learn how to paint Van Gogh's trees, bushes, wheat fields, sky, houses, or let's see, village, sunflowers, backgrounds, and more. I know that you will enjoy this course very much. We will have lots of lots of fun. So let us begin. For our first exercise, we will be using Van Gogh's wheat field with cypresses as our reference image. In case when you want to save money or you are just interested in using paper, make sure that you have a piece of watercolor paper that you will secure in place with masking tape. We will follow with creating a sketch that you can complete by using pencil and I would recommend that you use a darker or softer pencil that means HB would be okay however it's better when you use even 2B, 4B or 6B like in my case. I'm not worried about the heaviness of the line since we want to make sure that everything will be covered with the quite a heavy texture similar to the way how Van Gogh applied it. The first step will be to create mountains. So I would divide the space into the three parts and approximately this is one here. And that will be the first diagonal line or maybe even lower, but again, I'm not worried about that. I know that this will be the line in which I will have the mountains dividing the sky. And then I will have the line in which that's what the most important to me. I will have my field approximately that. So we have a number of triangles. This is the one that we will be concerned today because we want to create a nice width field. Good. Remember, moving. So therefore the line will be organic and slightly uh, wavy. I will, look, I will finish just those mountains there. And then I will have a part that will consist on our bushes Again, some lady wa uh, wavy lines, cypress trees, two of them, one smaller and one bigger. Remember that in the simple, by simplifying the shapes, we will create another set of triangles. And from there, you can wave the positioning of them and the shape. Couple, I think, uh, like another set of bushes, which again, it's not of such an importance at this stage since we will work in this part with palette knife and those parts will be covered. So, definitely, um, will be kind of olive tree here. So, therefore, I'm just creating oval shape our field, and then definitely in the front, we have kind of wavy grass. Let's see, maybe we'll even push the field a little bit lower. Fantastic! The colors that I have chosen are cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre or oxide yellow, burnt sienna, my palette knife, and additionally I chose light green. As you can see on this side, I have my modeling paste that comes in the jar Golden produces it, maybe some other brands as well, light modeling paste. I already scooped some of it here and I will show you the paint application with and without. So the main color of our field is the yellow color. So when I will apply it, I will butter the surface and I will make sure that I apply a little bit heavier. As you can see the color, it's quite bright and you can tone it down with small addition of yellow ochre. And I can mix those two colors together. And then 
can see that the color changed. Um, since we don't want to use too much paint, I will suggest that we move to the application of light modeling paste into the mixture. I will add a very small amount of yellow. That should be enough. Notice how effective modeling paste is. It extends my paint beautifully. We also want to slightly tone it down or make it not as sharp yellow. Therefore, we'll add to it oxide yellow or yellow plastic mixture. So I will scoop this paint from my paper and then I will add it to our mixture. Good. At this stage, I'm ready to apply this mixture on the entire field. Since the field goes from the top line to the bottom, what I will do, I will butter the surface of my field with this mixture. Make sure that I apply it the way that we will have approximately two, three, five millimeters of paint on the surface. Don't forget, all the parts have to be covered. Good, now it comes to really a fun part. I will show you how we can create the effect of the stems and then of the top of our field. So notice the movement of my palette knife. I'm going up with it, slightly pushed under the angle. See like this, and then I'm going down. I'm going up. And then I'm going back down. I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And what I get, I get this beautiful ridge. So I can a little bit more. You can do the same with the brush. However, having experience of making copy of this painting numerous times, I noticed that this is the most effective way to do it. Yeah, just apply a little bit more paint. And now, notice, this is the deviation line between the vertical plane and horizontal one. The next step will be to use either brush or palette knife. In this case, I will use palette knife to give us the feel of the separate width, like this. This will create texture on the top. For the vertical plane of the stems, we have to indicate their movement and slightly change the color. So for this purpose, I will already start applying a little bit of my burnt sienna color, and I make sure that the color is not too sharp again. Therefore, I mix it with the mixture that I already have there. I also will take a little bit of yellow ochre, because I will work with those two colors, and then I add a little bit of the green. So before anything else, I will go with the mixture of burnt sienna, oxide yellow, and then with a little bit of green on the yes. vertical surface. So you can see right away the change. Instantly, the effect is happening. Now, I make sure that the green is not applying by itself, that this green mixes or blends nicely into the two layers of paint that you already placed on the vertical plane. Especially on the bottom, we can use a little bit more of this green mixed with burnt sienna color and yellow ochre or oxide yellow. Right. And just a touch. There. Very good. Now, with the top, we can leave it the way it is, or we can add some other colors into it. And because I have modeling paste that will not dry differently, but still will stay white, so I will simply take it and apply it on the top. Now, remember, when it seems that it's too much of white, you can simply blend it it into the yellow by pushing modeling paste with palette knife. I just want to have variety of the colors. I don't want to have the same color all over. Notice how good it will look like. 
there. We can also add a little bit of this mixture of oxide and benzene, just next to the ridge. Still Our field is done. I hope that you will be able now to repeat step by step what I've done. The most important is that you want to butter, I call it, the entire surface of the triangle on which later you will paint your wheat field. And then create, you start with creating the ridge by pushing your palette knife under the, I would say 45 degrees angle, your palette knife up and then bringing it back down. Notice this is the movement up and down. Shook, shook. And again, thinking about the movement, you also have to change slightly, not even so much direction, but the angle on which this movement will happen. And it will be just a couple of dots here because I see flowers. Later we can use, if you want to, some red. Uh, there's another spot, just one, that we also want to fill in. And this is the one behind bushes. Our first exercise is completed and now you will be practicing it on your own. Our Van Gogh sky during the daytime consists of a number of colors. We have the Naples color, which is a combination of your yellow ochre, or lots of white and tiny bit of yellow. Right, that would be the color here. We also have blue, and you can see a darker and lighter version. So you can decide which color, if it will be a phthalo blue, I will use cobalt. And then we have lots of white and a little bit of phthalo green mixed with a huge amount of white and tiny bit of this Naples color. So to help myself, I will use colors such as um, my modeling paste that looks white. I have lots of white on the side. I have my cobalt blue, tiny bit of the tailor green and buff color that will somehow substitute my Naples color. So, but I like to use my modeling paste and I will apply it on the surface. Oh, another paint mixed up in it. Good. So this is, since there are the mountains here, so my white, it's coming in this section right next to it. And you can see that I'm applying in, in the huge amount. Now the other part where I want to have this white, and notice my stroke, they are wavy. And I use the whole or three quarter width of my palette knife to move my paint. So I start with the lightest color because it's very easy to contaminate it with some other colors. And also, taking, taking in account that all those colors will be light, I can even afford to exaggerate and apply this white in many more places that it's actually visible. The next step will be the Naples color, which again, I'll use a little bit of my buff color and I add tiny, tiny bit of yellow into it. So again, notice the swirly movement of the clouds on the sky. So I'm also following the same kind of move. I just change from one direction to another one. So going from left to right, then I'm switching to the opposite direction, from the right to the left. And that's the system of movement. Time to move to another color and we can consider applying first blue and then move to the green. So I have a little bit of my modeling paste and white that I put on the side and then I add a little bit, just a dab of blue. Time to move to our green. I can move my tailor into the buff color. Okay. Doesn't look bad. Maybe add a touch of white. Well, I think it's good. Very small differences, but important ones. Very, very 
light color next to our mountains. You can still shape them. Voila, so you can see how rich our sky is. Still a little bit more of the white here and there. And now we can actually go with the intense full, full strength paint and simply bring it in a couple of places. For example, there, but not too much. Again, we don't want to have too much of it, just in some indication in a couple of places. Good, so we leave this painting and I hope that now you will use the opportunity to continue with the exercise on your own. In this exercise, I want to show you how to complete bushes, trees and the mountains. We, before we will paint our cypress trees, we should go to the mountains and apply some of the blue paint in the back. I'm mixing some of my cobalt onto my mouth. I will get a little bit of the teal blue because I want to make sure that the mountains will have a different kind of blue in them. As you can notice, I'm buttering the surface. So what it means, I'm applying a little bit heavy layer of the paint and then with my brush, I will shape it by moving the paint a little bit in this and that direction, as well as by applying some strokes onto it. Notice that I'm still not using yeah. brushes. When it will be the time, I certainly will. I'm not. The color looks really nice and now I can decide where this color should be lighter. I bring some white into it and again just gently moving with my palette knife I will I will get the effect that I want. See and the proper color. If I want to still string some of my blue I can directly bring my tail of blue here onto the mountains and especially the, there where we have the edge of them and then we can later do it with the brush because Van Gogh used always the outlines and you can notice that those outlines are very much visible over there Good. and then we want to bring some of the white again notice the strokes they are going on the diagonal Good. I will also use my brush so I can apply the paint a little bit heavier and then I will move it around. And I like to make it a, again, the tail of blue, it's a very powerful color. So I have to be careful when I apply it. I can also do it once the paint is dry, but I chose to work with it on the stage when it's still warm. And the most important, notice, I'm constantly thinking about recreating those lines showing us the mountain the direction so they are steep sharp and I also noticed that there's this yellow passage that I like so much so I will take just a little bit of modeling paste tiny bit of yellow and I will add it for the contrast in this section. So by Van Gogh everything is about this contrast. See this just a little bit. Good. So for the trees we can use a crumb brim because it's a little bit dull and then I will apply it on the trees. Another color uh, is Taylor. So that's how I will do. And I really butter the surface again. Lots of lots of paint on it. And remember, you want to have this organic shape, so very wavy. That's how the cypress tree looks like. There's a little bit of the blue space between, between those two cypress trees, and I don't want to lose it. So right away, bring the blue over there. Now 
I think a little bit of yellow, believe me or not, because I have already plenty of paint there. And with the brush, I can move this yellow to get an interesting change of greens. So we want to take maybe a palette knife or very sharp pointed brush. And then we want to even dab in a little bit of black. And then you want to bring the needles, like I call it, on the side, just like this. Then you dab your brush again in the paint. And then you go on the side. So I want to butter a little bit the surface because I will then be able to recreate the other parts. So as you can see, that's with palette knife it's easy to do it. Just make sure that you don't have the big one. Now I can swirl one over there. There's like a bush here. I can use more of the yellow. Notice I need to have this wavy line, not as tall as the cypress tree. I don't know what has happened here. Okay, we will have another big, big shape coming here in the front. So this side seems to be lighter. It seems that the light hits the bushes from our right side. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm already recreating those shapes. Then I have this lovely lighter green and I will now apply it here and there. More and then we have to work on our trees and for the tree definitely we will use both palette knife and brush. So right now I start with palette knife and I will move very soon to the brush and I want to give those ends of the i guess it's an olive tree i assume i don't know what kind but i really like its look and it will be a little bit darker next the tree that overlaps it. so we definitely want to have in this section slightly darker color we don't need to apply huge amount but you want to have this effect of those separate strokes and i also include a little bit of the purple and the purple will be necessary in the painting because we have lots of yellow used here and when you have such an enormous amount of yellow applied in the painting van gogh would always always somehow sneak a tiny bit of purple to brighten the yellow color you see so just by the edges that's all what i do a little bit of the color something in the front and there will be some very like almost off white color with some yellow in it but right now we just apply this very very light blue color which is just a tiny bit of the white, very small amount. I can see there's a little bit even more yellow in it, so I will slightly change the color. I'm blending the yellow into the bush or into the cream paint that we have there. Then, if I want to change it just a little bit, I can apply a little bit of the black to bring some of the stronger outlines. We work on the tree that overlaps another one in the back and for that purpose I will use a buff color mixed with Taylor and a little bit of the lighter green and I definitely want to have it in this, this section. I do need to move to the brush so with the brush I can do very much the same I just seems to be to have more slightly more control. And then notice there are lots of very happy colors. We also have to hem finally on the field. And then we can move to the white. Okay. Showing that there are lots of branches. And all of them move in different directions. And then we need to have dark colors. 
color that will represent the stems and trunks. Then, slightly at the angle. So what I'm doing, it's almost seems like a tree tree is here. You'll see some of those branches and you have to move to the purple. Purple is the color here. It has to be a lighter version of it. Well, if I think a little bit more of it, Mm -hmm. there. I'm just adding the colors because I want to have a brighter, more beautiful field. And I think that's what allows me to, to get. So we have those parts and now we have to go with some yellow again and bring also smaller strokes. Now the tail. Tail is a very useful color because it brings the brightness to the painting. And then pure white that will nicely blend inside. I still will darken the tree in the back to let the tree in the front to shine. See, it's always back and forth, back and forth until you are satisfied. So just adding some of the colors and reaching because we see more already what's going on. Right, so that's how the trees will be done. I still think that this yellow is a little bit too strong, so I want to tame it. Like this. See, so the color doesn't need to be so bright inside of those trees, but still has to be a green. Very good. I still believe that we need to have a darker color over there. See? Right, more. And then just a grant in the front. So I will. That's the buttering technique. We will butter. Notice my, my palette knife, how it moves. I'm taking my modeling paste, a little bit of yellow. I will mix both of them with yellow green. This is the fantastic color and I want to have this lushness. Yeah, I really want to have lots of it here. Like this, like this. Movement. That is the most important. They are the Van Gogh paintings. The Van Gogh paintings are always about, about movement, about energy, so that we bring them. See, I bring a little bit of the blue here because I really think it will help the tree as well a little bit more. There to unify everything, and then on the slider, we have the slide. Remember, two rows here that's important that you notice one moving again to, from right to left, and then on the top, more or less moving from left to right. And then we need some outlines and we need some flowers as well. There seems to be a part here. Then I apply a little bit of the buff color. Notice my, my movement of palette knife. I will need to have white mixed with yellow and because I have already plenty on my brush of green, I got a lighter color and I want to go with this lighter color to really indicate that even in the grass, there's not just one color. And then a couple more strokes and for that purpose, I will use purple and plus. Somehow I want to indicate that there is the differentiation between maybe one plane, this, and then another one here. And then I bring some of those strokes up. Again, we don't need to do exactly the same what we see in the in the painting. We want to have created a painting that has some feel of Van Gogh paintings. We just need to have a couple of flowers. So for the flowers, I need red and white. And I, I will try to use palette knife. And notice why it's happening. Those red dots are placed on the green. I also think that you can bring them over there just to brighten the painting. You see, this is like the cherry on the top of the cake. Somehow everything gets unified, looks strong. And then I will need some white spots. Then I can have my white spots done by using, again, palette knife, just in a couple of places. 
not evenly that is the most important you can apply the paint evenly you can use palette knife you can use heavy duty brushes i like the palette knife very much see i still put some of those lovely flowers here and there i also will go with some yellow to make it a little bit brighter and whenever you i think that there should be more yellow that's the time to do it like this section to brighten a little bit our sections and if you need to apply certain outline that's the time to do it as well Another painting that we want to use for our exercises is the Starry Night. Before we will start working on our sky, we want to first of course sketch. Well, I want to create the positioning where the mountains. And notice this a beautiful diagonal line because that's what Van Gogh would be doing. He would use lots of diagonal lines. Also, he would use strokes, not very long and very, very skinny. And here, well, you can see there's the movement. You almost feel like it's one line, but the line consists of many short, skinny strokes. So we will have the line of the mountains and it doesn't matter to me on this stage right now to look even of exact look. I just want to get the positioning approximately. I know that was another cypress tree here and I will create it by using simply the very sharp triangles from which I can again shape the tree the way more or less will look. Uh, like in the image and notice on the bottom on the lower part of the painting we have village and the village is presented here because we can see the church tower if we want to have it i just will indicate it for you the tower is the most important part and then i will show you how to create those buildings and how to paint them so i'm just very fast will draw using a rough perspective i call it positioning and then we will follow. Okay, so I will know that this is that much the buildings will be over there and that's what we have for now. The sketch is done, we move to the sky. In the sky we have combination of yellows and blues as dominant colors. There's also a little bit of purple, but the purple will come with another the color that we will call ultramarine blue. That has already some red in it. I will I just apply it a little bit on the side and we will definitely need white because the white will allow us bring some of this lighter strokes inside. I have my modeling paste mixed with some yellow and I want to make a little bit lighter version of it. That's perfect. But for now, what I'm interested in is to go with a thick layer of blue, just a little bit in some of those sections where I really see that, that we have blue, blue, blue. Okay, just not to lose certain shapes. I know that in this section, I will have this moon. I can see this big swirl coming there. So I want to keep it as well. And there will be another one following. Here then I have a, I call them pancakes. <laughs> and some of those stars will come there and there. And maybe another one here. So my blue is coming. I just apply it a little bit more. There where I know that majority of the paint will be blue. And I will work on variety of the blues in it. So that will help me right away. So it's quite a bit. And that's my another pancake or the star. This definitely has to be a little bit heavier. Just like this. Yeah, I'm going around. 
I have to have enough paint to, according to manipulate later with moving some other colors into this blue. And I need the white because I want to have the color to be a tone lighter, darker, and also to introduce some other blue colors into it. Like for example, here I have my ultramarine. Notice now the strokes. Now I can afford the movement of those short strokes, very expressive around those pancakes or the stars. That will look really good this way. So I have a base color and now I'm developing it. Okay, and don't forget that we have to have those short strokes. They are the keys to create this interesting, exciting painting. So I have the white on the side with my ultramarine blue color and I'm going with the mixture on the top of my first layer of blue, which was the cobalt blue. I also think that we have to apply a little bit different color in it and a little bit cerulean. Can you just a touch? Well, I just want to have more variety before I proceed to the darker colors. I want to still apply a little bit of the tail on. We can move over to the tailor now, because tailor is a very powerful, intense color. So instead of using black, we can try the effect of those darker lines in the painting by using tailor. When we use black, the problem is that when you overdo, the painting can look like covered with muddy spots. And therefore, if we have an alternative, like in this case, this lovely tailor, then why not to use it? Now it's time for us to move to yellow. And I get a little bit of this paste inside. That's again my modeling paste. The same I will do right away since I'm here. Then in this part of the sky as well, that has this yellowish glow. So I'm applying it by using the battering technique. We can also bring this color up. See, we pick up too much of the blue, so we have to be careful. So maybe just with the tip of our brush, we apply a little bit of this color. To there, and this another one star. Maybe we'll still come back to them. Just having a little bit of the color would be nice, and a little bit heavier paint application right away. Good. So I'm taking purple now. And you can see I'm mixing it with lots of lots of white. And that will be my next step because I want to have this color definitely in my sky. So from time to time I have to clean up the brush because I have a tail on the paper and this tail is overpowering. So once it's get onto the brush, it right away affects the whole color combination. We have to finish our sky and for that purpose I think we have to rely now on brushes. Since the paint is dry, we can nicely establish skinnier lines. You are just using off-white color, that means lots of white and tiny bit of blue.
notice I use a pointed brush now because it's much easier for me to apply the paint. And then it's time to create the moon. With the brush, I will create the crescent shape and then I will outline it and then again I will come back with a little bit of yellow again to make sure that all those extra lines that I don't like will disappear under another layer of paint. Very good. The next step will be to bring a little bit of the blue onto the yellow so this everything will look so natural. And then of course again a little bit of white here and there and we will be done with the section. Good. We need to come back with some yellow onto our stars. Another color that I want to use, it's a little bit of my burnt sienna color that I put on the side and my buff color. This color works like a complementary color to blue. Remember, blue and orange are complementary colors, helping each other shine. So in this case, our brown color works actually as the an orange color. So it adds more vibrancy to the whole uh, painting. Very good. I think we are done with the sky and you can see it was created by using short, narrow strokes. One of the colors that we can use would be black, but I would be very careful not to use too much of it. It's time to shape our tree. Since it's a cypress, and I want to use a little bit of the outline to show that they are like separate branches sticking out. Definitely a little bit wider. Yeah, this is also like a bump on the tree. And then certainly on this side, helping us to make it very flamboyant, I will call it. Make sure that the white spots that were left for the tree are not there anymore. Very good. And then at the same time, since we are here, I will create the lines for the mountains. Yeah, I would mix a little bit blue with the black. I don't want to have it perfectly just black, or I want to have it black, but on the bluish side. And that's important because this way the color will be alive. Why when we use black, just pure black, but it's often happened that the color doesn't have depth in it and therefore adding another color into it, like blue, green, red, will, I call it, spice up the painting. Now it's time to work just on our tree. So we apply the green color and I will go with a little bit more paint right away. So you can see how I move my brush. We can also use palette knife for the wider sections. But I, I will refrain from it right now. I just want to show you how we can achieve exactly the same effect by using simply the brush. Now I will use a little bit of the purple. And I think purple always works well with the green. So it was spiced up the color. I have to move it in different sections. So again, the tree is still the tree. We will keep the green color, but we also need to have some other colors to make it visually more interesting to us. While applying those colors, we don't want to keep a flat surface. We want to bring the thickness of the paint through the moving upwards brush strokes. And also the dark brown, which will be our burnt amber, as well as raw amber, and then a slight patch of burnt sienna. And why I want burnt sienna? Because this color will give a warm color into the tree. And again, when it's too strong, you just simply mix it with the paint underneath. Since we are on the tree, then we also have to think about our additional bushes. Then and again, this interesting way how he painted them. And just kind of like this. So that's truly 
all those shapes overlapping each other like this. And then I will create another layer that will come. Yeah, so you can make almost like a tunnel here. I want to bring a little bit of the blue and with the blue and white, actually I would use, I will see which color will work the best. I want to come, but I think it will be the cerulean color that we have. I will come onto those shapes inside and I will recreate those strokes. some of those colors and we certainly will have a light yellowish green there as well and white now notice that we'll need a base color underneath of the stroke that will come on top of the mountains i will apply the color very fast with the brush and i add a little bit of the purple into it and that will be a fantastic mixture as a base for my mountains here and now it's time to go on the top and I will use cobalt and with the strokes I will simply bring them up. We have to go now on top of our bushes and bring some of the outlines to give them a little bit more shape. Okay. And I use a little bit of purple here, we had already black, I think that will be a good choice. Notice with, with those bushes, I assume that they are bushes, we have to get them a little bit darker on the bottom. So we still will emphasize a little bit more parts of them by using our darker blue and go on the bottom. But you also can use a tiny bit of black. That's your personal choice. The most important is the strokes, the direction and the choice of colors, how you will distribute them. So I will go definitely here darker and I'm keeping this rounded shape. You noticed this green inside of those bushes on the left side is more on the yellow side. It's not so cool. So I certainly can bring some yellow inside and the color turns into the light, not light, well, it's yellowish green, which I want to have here. I also have to look here in the front and right away, since I have my yellow, well, I can use light green. I'm coming now from the halfway of my bushes to the top. And that's the color will come on the top, like this. So if you choose still have lighter, you can do it because it's your painting. You just want to recreate the feel of Van Gogh paintings to bring this energy. I want to go on the left side and finish the color combination. I want to make sure that I'm quite happy. So you see I'm really playing with thickness of the paint, with swirls, just to give more energy. We approach the houses. The most important for us to understand that this is the village, that is the church. And why I think that's a church? Well, because we have a big tower here. And we need to outline it a little bit more before we apply another color inside. And I will insist that that will be our first feature of the entire set of buildings. If you think that you want to use pencil, because I will sketch everything using just the brush and paint, then you are certainly welcome to do it. But I want to show you how easily it will go. I want to make this tower even more pronounced. I can decide how tall it will be and I take a liberty and I really push it up. Remember, Van Gogh wasn't going for super perfection, so I would, we are not worried about that. And I just want to have now in two point perspective, more or less, this building that it's overlapping the tower. This one, the window. Let's so make it darker. Later on, I put some purple or blue into it. But right now, it's just the outline. I don't use very heavy outlines. Black is very powerful as a color. So I want to just have skinny as possible lines with not too much paint. So this is the roof. We start with this upside down V and then we make a parallel line to it. And then again. As 
we show the roof of the side of the house. What we can help, we can show that is the roof by using the diagonal lines on the top. And this section needs to have door, so I can make rectangular dark shape in it. The most important, I just have to finish the wall. So you see, very simple trick how to do the buildings. Once you have a structure set it up, the rest can be very simplified. So we will create a roof in the front, like this, and then that's already a house because the first two houses that we've done, including the church, bring us the idea what it is because it's repetition of similar shapes. Right? If you want, you can apply the window here. You can also bring some windows here. You are just at the edge. We can apply another house. And now I we have everything. Good. So we are not worried about the other side. Time to work on the roofs. And the roofs will have the colors similar to the colors that appear in the space over there. So we want to have the green. I also will take a little bit of white and maybe even of my buff color and some brown. So a little bit of those lines coming there. Then additionally, I push something on the side. What is happening to the roof? It's more bluish, so I will leave it. The one next to the church. That's good. And then I want to have a color that will look more like a gray on the blue side. And then I will go to the tower, fill the space between the black lines. Yellow. And then we have, we show that the windows. I would just use my liver to apply it over there. And even a little bit on the roof. See, there's something there, so this one I just leave. Then from there, I have to use a little bit of the brown and just add it to break the color. So for example, on this roof, I want to have more of this color. It just makes it more interesting, exciting. And the same will be in the back. Just make it more interesting. It will use purple. The purple really works well in our painting. Now we need to just think about filling cups here and there and we will be done. And our paintings is done. It's not really difficult to work with Van Gogh style. You just have to know a little bit about those tricks and then you can see how nicely everything can be done. As you can see, it's a bright, beautiful painting with lots of movement in it. In this lesson, we want to learn how to paint the background. Remember, we are not obliged to paint exactly every little bit that you see in this painting. The most important is we want to capture the spirit of Van Gogh. That means we want to capture his mark making, brush strokes, and the way how he included the energy in his paintings and some of those tricks using outlines and the color combination. So I place the image on the side, then we will start with the sketch. Sketch, I have to decide how will I arrange the flowers. And I think the flowers will take me a little bit more than the half. Then I will place the vase somewhere here. And the vase is quite centrally placed. I have to make sure that it's not too big, that I have the space for all the things. So I think my vase well, it's quite a bit of flowers, so maybe push it a little bit, one, two, I'll push it a little bit higher. Okay, so there, there, and lucky for me, with Van Gogh, he wasn't really precise, that was not his style. Everything was about bringing the feeling, the energy, so that should be okay for the vase. There will be a line, and I have to create a distinction between the background and my 
stand. So that's what we have. Now, how we approach the flowers? Very easily, we have to just look at these big groupings and also have the big height of them. So I think one is definitely important to bring one here. Notice that I create the oval shape that is slightly slanted or placed on the diagonal line because this is the center or this ellipse represent the direction in which the flower looks at. That's how I call it. One is pushed down. So what we have to do, ah, that will be another ellipse. Yeah. This time we have to go a little bit down like this. And then I have quite a bit of space here, but I don't want that this part will be too big. So maybe I make it a little bit smaller. And I'm not worried about the heaviness of my lines because those lines will disappear and a heavy, heavy paint that I will apply on the top. I see another flower there. I don't even need to use all of them. So I place one somewhere here. Maybe I even can make them a little bit smaller. So that will be my decision. Yeah, smaller. So I have more space here for the flowers. There will be another one. I certainly see one here the facing me. So what I want to do, I want to create like a roller around and then those patterns will come there. There's another one somewhere here, which I can include. And even when I have to bring the patterns across the borders of my canvas, or in this case paper, it doesn't matter. Remember, we practice, we learn how to paint in the style of Van Gogh. And I think that will be another stamp with the flower coming. There. We don't want to have too much. If you want to cut one flower, that's okay too. It's no problem. See, like this. Maybe there will be another one here. And there's definitely near this one here. So there's like a melody. This one has to be pushed a little bit further. Fantastic. I have enough information. And now it's time for me to work on the background. I will use for that purpose my palette knife because it will be much easier to apply the colors. And the color that I see in the back, it's my cerulean color. Ooh, I definitely need to mix it with some white, but I will show you that that will be not enough. I will need to apply another color. A little bit of the buff color can go into it. And I think I will switch to another palette knife in the second. Right now I'm buttering the surface. So I have to go with a little bit heavier paint application and then I will recreate the strokes on the top. The stamp will need yellow colors on. And the colors that we can use here certainly will be not one color. We have yellow ochre or oxide yellow. We can add to it a little bit of burnt sienna, but I think majority should consist on just cadmium yellow medium. So the only thing which we have to do is to use the line. And for the line, I will use the color that will be a mixture. I'm sure it will be my brown and a little bit of burnt sienna. See, like this it will be okay. And then I just dipped it in my. See, that's what I have. Okay, now I can see that I still need a little bit more on the maybe on the edge here. Okay, very good. We want to first think about the big shapes and those big hats can be done by using uh, the combination of the cast that we use in the stand. So that will be one of those colors. You can see it's very warm, but that's okay. We will cool it down with a little bit of the green later on. Right now, I just want to set up the colors. I'm getting even just to see. Just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. That's better. I want to go to this one. See, now we can get a little bit more of this crazy shape that you can see over there. 
And if you want cannabis patch and you want to come out the blue, you certainly can. Red, as you can see higher then I see more brown coming on this side like almost like dividing the flowers I will just make this barrier here which can later can be fixed remember the more paint you apply the longer it will take for the paint to dry and we need this time to decide what we have to change what we have to add and so on so I'm applying this green now and I I need to have it in this section, so I'm playing quite fast, and there will be just a little bit of black, or maybe even purple can be mixed in it. For example, this purple should work well inside, and I can decide how much of this has to be mixed into the green, but it gives this back to the painting, so that's good. Okay, I can see that this flower it's more on the yellow ochre side or yeah, oxide yellow, but it still needs some yellow color in it. Garden yellow. So that's what we will have there. This one here. Ooh, right. A little bit of this green will be in it. So I can right away help myself. Yeah, but there has to be a slight differentiation among those flowers in terms of color combination and tone. But it's even the colors. It's a little bit in one is more of green, another one is more of cadmium, another one more yellow ochre, and so on, so on. I think a little bit more on the redder side. That's my medium dark brown called sienna. If you have Venetian color or English red, that's the color. The Indian red, it's a little bit too much on the purple side. So for some painting it's excellent, but I don't think here would be such a good choice. This center, it's more on the brownish and blackish side. Lots of red in it. So I used definitely lots of this beautiful burnt sienna color and so will be this one. I'll allow myself to apply first generously burnt sienna and then I will change the color and I will do the same to this flower. Open and then we have one coming in the section that we almost covered. Then I add some green because I want to tone it down. This beautiful yellow ochre will come. What about when we go now with some of the steps? And I need the stems because we have to decide where the patterns will go. Because we don't need to paint all of them. Notice that I applied the green first and then I will come inside with some yellow ochre. But I do need to create the base. I just apply the basics. And then for refinement, we will be back. Where else do I need to come? Certainly in this section. Now we'll come, let's see, and I still can add a little bit of the black into the green and purple combination. I will use black in this section. Where's my flower? Because I want to darken the section where leaves will come. I think I want to go to the vase. You see, I have white and I have buff. And I think the buff will be very good in this section. Notice, I can now decide how white those lines will be. And this so I can see a little bit of the green between the flowers, the heads and the vase. So this way the contrast is created. Now I can come with stronger colors. And what is important to me to watch the direction of the strokes. There's a little bit of the pink which you can apply later on. But my strokes help also to see the volume in the object. So I think this is still a little bit too thick. So I'm coming back to it. Yeah, I can cut it a little bit. Maybe I bring a little bit of the purple into it, mix with burnt sienna. So now I think I want to go back to the green. 
and the longer we apply it in the sections that allow us to create contrast definitely yeah see this little bit crumbing even on the face and almost like a reflection on the on cast shadow here those lines one two a little bit of the purple onto this pattern um, just for the contrast to show that this pattern is closer to us a little bit there okay now think about developing the yellow patterns remember one two most of them or up one and two See, look at the texture now in them. You have, of course, artistic lines, since you can change art, whatever will suit your painting. So I will start with application of paint around because all those patterns will create this rounded shape around and then from there I can move to separate petals. The same will be with this flower. So I, again, I can do very much the same going around. Having the circle first done, now it's very easy to just move the paint from the circle and create the pattern. So for example, this flower can be a little bit darker in the center and what I will do from there, I will pull the patterns. Now I have a little bit more colors in it and I like it. So this flower it still doesn't have the volume. See, so again, we will dab some paint on it because we want to have this beautiful, beautiful texture. I see, like this. The same. It's much skinnier passage, but it's this one, it's very, very important one. Mm -hmm. And then we have this difference of tones this flower will be a little bit darker so i apply more of burnt sienna in the back i like what is happening there so i'm just adding a little bit of this color and notice how the painting emerges with all those different colors having having so much colors and looking so happy and that is the trick when you work like van gogh because that's how his paintings look like they look very busy and most of them look very happy we are just putting the last touches I'm quite pleased with it yeah. this painting notice i bring some of the blue because i think it nicely fits into this painting and that's my own choice but i think it adds to it so if you feel that certain colors will work for you go for them Thank you for participating in my course. I hope that you enjoyed it. Now you are ready to paint your own creation in style and technique of Mr. Van Gogh. If you are interested in taking more courses with me, please visit my website isabellaorzelski.com. Have a good day and see you next time. Bye.